Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. It's Monday with our Happy Everything So Along, all being done from my holiday celebrations. We're taking different blocks and making a sampler. So before I show you that, I have to tell you that I am not wearing the glasses again right now because it was just, even with the sponge up here, it was just too much pressure and eventually I was getting headaches all the time. So I took them off and that seemed to alleviate it for right now because they're still swelling in the face and I wake up sometimes in the morning and my eye is swollen. So this is all from having um, skin cancer removed from my face, a uh, big hole was left and then we had to patch up that with skin from my cheek. So it's pretty major. There was a lot of uh, surgery done to my face here. So that's why there's no glasses again. <laughs> okay, so we have the pumpkin today from the, uh, the bags that are in the book. Isn't they cute? I went with the white pumpkin, which I just love. Now look at what's up on the wall. So we've got everything up on the wall. I did this section down here. So I got those parts done. I added the, the leaf at the bottom and have the house and the, you know, the, the sides, you know, all of the settings. So he's ready. Now from here out, as you work on the blocks, there are lots of setting parts to it. So we are, let's see if you look at this here, we are here on, on the project. And so as we work, there's, you know, settings here, there's settings here. So you want to just keep working on those if that is how you've, you know, progressed up to this point because that's that's kind of what I've done I've just kept going on those things and I think it's just made it a lot easier uh, so that by the time I'm done pretty much everything is finished um, some of you will just be doing blocks and then you will do all the settings afterwards and that that works too because you know then all your colors uh, particularly I think for those of you doing fairly scrappy quilts where um, maybe you don't have sort of a solid color scheme going on so sometimes you have to wait till you get all the blocks and then you can see what will help it hold together. You know, like maybe you need navy or black or green, something to hold all those different colors together. But I already went in knowing I was going to use gray and yellow with just little bits of teal or aqua. So I'm pretty good on mine. So let's take a look at some tips for making the pumpkin. To make a white pumpkin, I'm gonna put it on a darker background. So very much like the tote bags, where actually the pumpkin is orange on the tote bags, but the little ghost is white, and she is on a darker background. So I'm gonna give you the tips I do for putting a really light fabric on a dark background, and we gotta pick which dark background. So I decided I wanted, I pretty much want the dots, but I'm also thinking about the floral. So let's, let's take a look. I got my bin of gray out, and I pulled out some things here because, you know, that's what we do. I've got, okay, this is the pumpkin stuff, and there's this, the stem. This is one of the fabrics from our friends. One of our friends here sent me a little fabric pack, and that was in it. Okay, so the background. I really love this floral uh, because the weight is gonna cover up most of it. This is also just nine inches wide, which means I'm okay with that because I can just make the little sashings a little bit bigger. That means they will be a little different than the one below it, but it's only going to be like a fourth of an inch on either side if I decide to go that way. But I also kind of like the dots. So there's a couple of different dot fabrics and let's put, like, well, first let me just show you that floral. If I open the floral up, um, you know, and you put a pumpkin on there like that, that looks really nice. And that, that floral is so pretty. Um, just, oh, just so nice. Okay. Oh. All right, so then I have the dots. These are small dots on a lighter background. I think all the dots look really fabulous. So if I want a dot, I think any of them work. There's a bigger dot, that's kind of fun. I like that one. Then here's the darker dot. So I'm leaning away from the darker dot because I don't want to have this focus of like a sort of a dark spot because a lot of the backgrounds are lighter. So even though the pumpkin will fill it up, so this is not my, I'm gonna eliminate that one. So that's good. Got one gone. And then we've used this one. I've used it, I think in a sash, did I use it in there? I think I used it, yeah, a little bit of sashing. 
Um, and it also has maybe, I might just save this for some more sashing. So it's really down to, of course, if I'm going to go dots, you got to go big or go home, right? You gotta go, why do the tiny dots when you can do the big dots? So do the big dots or the floral. Oh, okay, I'm thinking. Now, when I do the ghost, I mean, I'm sorry, when I do the pumpkin, <laughs> white ghost, so I'm going to make two layers of pumpkin. One is just a solid white, and then on top of it will be the pumpkin fabric, which is a little bit textured. I wanted something that had a little bit of personality to it. Then I will do all the eye and the mouth and the nose in this really soft dot of gray, super light gray. So what I have is two pumpkins cut out. I took all the shapes, you see them? Took all the shapes and drew them inside so that saves that fusible. When I cut this part out, I will just, you know, save that for the next uh, applique project I do. So, you know, I don't need to get rid of it, it just saves it. Um, and I will make one pumpkin out of this and one pumpkin out of that. While at the ironing board, I decided, yes, I would go with the big dots because how often do I get to use something like that as a background? It's like, yes, it just makes me happy. Uh, and then I'm actually going to use this floral as the eyes and, you know, as the face on the pumpkin. So I need to use, uh, have a nine and a half by nine and a half background. Uh, I highly recommend if you do not own a square ruler that you get one. This is a 12 and a half by 12 and a half. It makes everything so much easier for cutting out squares, uh, you know, checking the sizes of things that are square. I actually have a really big ruler too. It is a 21 by 21. Okay, so there's my background. And the other pieces now, I have the, the front, this is the front fabric, so I have that fused down. I have the back fabric, the back, you know, underneath, the underneath part. Don't leave a thread on there. Do you see that white, that red thread? Don't leave that on there because if it gets stuck underneath, you're going to see it. So this will be cut out to be on the bottom half. And then I have the, f the face parts, which I put on the floral. And I just cut out the centers, leaving it all attached in that unit. Now I'm really comfortable with cutting centers out. So this is not an uncomfortable shape for me to have this kind of Swiss cheese shape. If you've never done this before, then you might want to cut each shape individually and then cut out the center to give yourself a little bit more control, like the stem is done. Cause of course stems on a different piece of fabric. Uh, it's not on that, not on the floral. So let me cut these out. Here's an example of why we need the background. Um, some people will fuse this and then they will go afterwards, they will stitch it and then they will go and cut away behind here. But I prefer just to do two layers, which to me is a lot easier. So this is why I want to have a second layer. And when I'm cutting the second layer, here it is on the white, I will actually cut it, uh, rather than cutting it exactly on the line, which is what this one is, and all the other shapes are exactly on the line. Let me see them. Uh, I'm going to cut just inside because then it's, then I don't have to have parts of this underneath piece peeking out. If I make it just a little bit smaller, just barely inside the line. All right, now what we do is I have the white and then on top of it, we'll go the outside, the, the main pumpkin. This is what the pumpkin will be like. So I'm gonna, you know, scoot it around here, see where it lands. If there is a piece that maybe you need to trim a little bit more, they could just, you know, you haven't taken any, you haven't fused anything, you can just pick this up and trim that little edge so that nothing is seen under there. Normally I will take this right to the ironing board and press it all. I showed you pressing on the video for the house. So if you wanna see pressing, go watch that video again. But I'll just lay out the face so you can see how stinking cute it is. Look at this. Look, 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 look with a little green stem. And I usually put the stem underneath like that and give it a little angle. And so this will be the final pumpkin. When you get ready to sew this down, 
you will be sewing through both layers of the white cloth, you know, the solid white underneath. And so you just sew regularly. Your machine is not going to have any problem with one more layer of cotton there. It's no different than if when you're sewing the mouth, and you know, in that part. And then you also, you could, you could top stitch the gray. Like if you didn't want to do a blanket stitch there, you could top stitch the whole thing. If you're top stitching, you're going just a little bit inside. If you're blanket stitching, you know, it takes a little bit more focus. But either way, it looks really nice and holds the piece, um, the applique down to the background, which is the point. Remember, this is raw edge applique. If you're doing a blanket stitch, you are covering the edge, which I think gives a ni really nice look. That's my favorite way to do it. So that's what I do. So the color threads that I worked with are all Orifil 50 weight. I went with a really nice white. Even though these are off white, I went with the white because it just gives it sort of a nice blended edge. Now with the gray, there's so many different shades you could go with. Many of them will work. Now, if you put the whole spool of anything down, it looks super dense and it's, you know, the color is so, so concentrated. What you want to do is take that single thread and lay it on your fabric. And when you lay the single thread on the fabric, it's going to give you a much truer idea of what you're dealing with. And this gray is just fine, just like about 10 other shades of gray would really be fine. Same with the sort of um, old gold, this greeny, yellowy gold. I went with this tan. I just laid one strand. Now it is a bit lighter than that fabric, but I you know, could have maybe found, I'm sure I can find something that's maybe a little bit darker, but I thought this is fine. I have it out, it's available. And so that's what I used. Another thing that'll be helpful with the applique is if you don't already have my book on applique, you know, all my tips and tricks for doing applique, this one will give you photos that show you step-by-step, step, you know, different parts like on thread color. Um, here is, you know, some of the sewing ones and it's all got it step-by-step. Also, if you come to my YouTube channel here, you just go in the search bar and type applique, you will find that it comes up with videos that have applique mentioned. So there you go. There's your little pumpkin for today. And I know a lot of you will probably do orange pumpkins. <laughs> and before I do a mail call, I want to remind you tonight, I will be talking to Heidi Kaizen of Hen and Chick Studio. Uh, it is going to be a live at 8 p.m. Eastern. You had to have signed up. So the link is down below and at my website today you can so you get the zoom email because uh, you need to be able to sign in so that will be something you want to get in on okay let's do a little mail call i have this wonderful card from joe whoops let's come down here look at this and her friend painted this isn't that beautiful? Her friend's a painter who came to painting um, a little bit later. I think she said after she her friend retired, she started painting. It's like so beautiful. This is from Karina. Look at this pretty Christmas card. So a few of you asked, you know, what do I do with the cards? And I do have a mantle in my living room. Well, it's the top of uh, the TV cabinet in my living room. And I put them up there. And then I... Uh, keep them. I have a keepsake box and I keep them in there. So here's a beautiful card, whoops, from a, <laughs> from Nancy with an edge. That's for me. That's <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Uh this one is from Tony. Right? Yes, I've got two cards stuck together. Look at these birds. Aren't they beautiful? It is so pretty to put the cards up on the man, you know, up on the top of there and I can see them all. I'll have to do a picture after I put some more up. This is from this is from Clara. She sent me so many beautiful messages you all have sent. I love love the lighthouse. Red and white stripe. Clara knows me so well. Exactly wonderful. This one is from my buddy Beth. Beth and I met each other so many years ago when uh, she worked at a quilt shop and then I came and taught for her guild and I got to get a little view, you know, tour of the quilt shop because it was even after hours. Okay, so I have a few other things. This is a birthday card that Diana sent me and Diana and I have known each other for many, many years. Uh, look at that, so cute. But Diana also sent me, um, what she also sent me. She sent me this piece of fabric because Diana organized with a bunch of ladies that have been 
part of my quilting community a long time, you know, the virtual community. She organized to do a quilt for Dennis Dickinson, Cindy's husband, my friend Cindy that passed away. Uh, so we, um, so she sent me pieces of this. And I'll pop a picture up. Here's a picture Dennis posted of the quilt when it came. He was so surprised and so touched um, to have friends because he knows a lot of you as well, um, you know, the, because he helps monitor my group. So he's one of the admins, one of the three admins. There's just me, Greg, and Dennis who monitor the Facebook group. That's it, nobody else. So you don't need to yell admin in there because it's just, you can just say our names. You can just tag our names. That'll be fine. And this is a beautiful tree on a postcard. You know, the words make the tree. I love that. This is from Heidi. <laughs> and Heidi in Texas. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple that came with something. Uh, so this one is so fun. I've got a bag. I'm trying to find out. Jillian. This came from Jillian. Look. Look at this. It's so cactus. Pick. Was it? prickly pear cactus jelly. Have you used this? What do you put it on? So tell me, tell me in the comments, is this something like, you know, what do you use it for? I want to know. And then I had, let me see if I can keep, keep all this straight. I hope I am. This one is from Mary and Mary sent me some more wonderful words of encouragement. I love that. And a super cute little coaster. Look at that and some chocolates, yummy chocolates. I love Dove chocolates and a nice uh, magnet. And then the last one, I also have to put a picture up because this one came from Wisconsin and Carolyn sent, she sent us Wisconsin cheese. And I'll tell you that stuff didn't, uh, <laughs> no moss grew on it under the tree. So the, uh, this cheese came in the mail and Greg was like right away had to open the cheese curds, Carolyn, and try it because he was like, we never had it. And so thumbs up, thumbs up. She also sent me this beautiful card. Look at that. And a bunch of kitty fabrics because she raises kitties. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. I'll be chatting with you over on Heidi's thing tonight. And be sure that you make your pumpkin. I love you. Mwah. See you online.